I just parked the car, I'm not going to tell you where, but it's somewhere in England and it literally said no camping, no parking overnight, no fires, no anything, but I'm going to leave the car there, I don't mind and let's hope tomorrow I didn't get either fined or the car got towed because this place is amazing, look at it. When we get to camp, I will show you all my equipment. The sleeping pad is the, one of the most heavy things that I have, but it's really, really comfortable. So I don't mind that it's heavy because I like sleeping comfy. But yeah, most of the stuff is really cheap. Nothing way too expensive. And yeah, I'll speak to you when we get to camp. It's really hard to detach ourselves from the modern life that we live in. The society pushes us to do certain things, to be addicted to social media, and that is really, really bad for our mental health. I have a very, very massive problem trying to deal with not being addicted to Instagram, to TikTok. It's a real struggle for me. And I feel like we're missing some of the things that in the past our ancestors had, that we take for granted and that we think that our modern life, it's so much better than what they went through or we're so much advanced in comparison to them. And I think that that's a real mistake. I think that they live such a connection with nature that we don't have. They lived such a time where machines didn't invade their privacy, their life, everything that they did wasn't connected to a machine. I think that's a big, big, massive problem that we have in modern society. We are surrounded by cables, by attachments to modern life that in some sense, sometimes they're an impediment for our development. I think especially young people I play video games, I've been hooked on video games, I've been hooked on my phone and it's so hard for me to not be addicted to it that I see that the young generations are going to have a big massive problem when they grow old. My generation was lucky enough to live both worlds. We lived the beginning of technology, the beginning of the internet, the beginning of consoles. So I was lucky enough to live both lives. When I was young, we had a PlayStation in our house, but if I wanted to play with friends, I had to meet them to play the PlayStation. I did go out in the streets. I played football all day long. I was all day long in the street playing. I did BMX, I did football, I did basketball. I did every sport you can think of. I went to Boy Scouts. So my childhood, in a sense, although consoles and social media was starting to become a big massive thing, I lived both lives. I lived out in the streets playing football all day. And when I came home, I had a PlayStation. And today's generation is losing that. For today's generation, the idea of fun is being in, a ha being in your house, playing your PlayStation or your Xbox while you're talking to a friend, while he's in, in his house playing his PlayStation or his Xbox. And I don't want to sound old fashioned, but well, maybe I am old fashioned in a sense. But I don't think that that level of not being, not seeing another person eye to eye, that can affect your mental health. And even if you don't want your kid, if, if you have children and you don't want your teenager kid to be all day long hooked to his PlayStation or his Xbox or his phone, there is really sometimes no way out. All his friends are going to be hooked on that. Old people are hooked on it. How, we, how do we expect young people not to be hooked on it? All his friends are on social media. All his friends are playing PlayStation all day. So how do you get that child to not be addicted to that? It's a really, really big issue that we're going to face in the future is how do we raise our children so that they're not hooked on it? They can use it, but not be hooked on it. It's a really difficult balance to strive for, but I think it can be done. I think even us older people, we have to be an example to young people in where we can show them that, look, although I have a phone, although I have social media and I have a PlayStation, I still go out into nature. I still do things. I'm still in connection with that primal part of our lives, which is we were not born. We were not meant to be inside a house all day long in front of a screen or working in front of a screen all day long. We were meant to live life out in nature. We were meant for our bodies are designed to 
go through so much struggle that we, we can't even begin to imagine how much our bodies can take. The load our bodies can take is so much more than we think that if we try to push our bodies to the extreme, it will show us things that we never thought we could do. By the way, this is the Van Gogh Soul 200 tent. It's very cheap. It only costed around £85 on Amazon, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's cheaper on Amazon. I bought it with I bought it from a website, but I, th I think it's even cheaper on Amazon. It's like £60. I will leave links in the description for everything that I use. This is the Van Gogh Soul 200. Like I said, only £60. The self-inflatable mattress, it has memory foam in it. It only costed around £40, if I'm not mistaken. And a self-inflatable pillow, which costed around £20. They are heavy. The self-inflatable mat is the most heavy thing that I have in the pack, but it's really, really comfortable to sleep on it. And while we're at it, I'm gonna show you. It's a very simple setup. I have a very, very, very cheap self-inflatable mattress, but it's got foam in it. I will leave links in the description. And then I have a self-inflating pillow also. It's foam, memory foam as well. And then the sleeping bag. As for the backpack, I'm using a Highlander, I think it was 65 litres, and a water bladder. And yeah, that's it. That's my whole setup. And the tent, obviously. This is a trick that I use with instant coffee, which is if you pour two drops of water and then you remove it like a lot, it turns out to cappuccino. So yeah. If you mix the instant coffee with the sugar and then you remove it, it turns out to be a paste like this. And when you put the water in there, I don't know why, it turns out like cappuccino. Look at that. I don't know if you can see it, but it turns out like cappuccino instead of a normal instant coffee. And I like my luxuries, so I have milk. It really does turn out like cappuccino, look. Really, it turns out really nice. So if someone is gonna say in the comments, oh, you're in your back garden. No, I'm not.
so peaceful. Pack the sleeping pad. The sleeping bag and the pillow. Like I said, I'm pretty close to the car. So, that's nice. And, all done. Like I said, I'm quite close to the car. I did walk for a while with the backpack on, but I couldn't find a good place. I went downhill, I went uphill, I couldn't find a nice place. But then I found this place. Because all the other places that I found had, the weeds were completely overgrown and I just, I didn't like it for camping. So this is quite close to the car park, but it's still very nice and calm still. So, I'm packing everything up, and that's the sleeping pad, pillow, sleeping bag is there as well. But there was a bit of condensation from the night. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a bit wet. So I'm going to try to wait so it dries. It's not really good to pack up the tent when it has condensation so yeah I'll show you how I leave everything after I pack to show you that I left no trace that's what you have to do so this is how everything looks that's where the tent was you can see it because I moved all the leaves that's the only thing left to pick up I don't want to put the leaves back there so I want to remember the place I would like to come back here again so peaceful so so peaceful by the way I didn't say it but I had a great night's sleep I slept almost the whole night through maybe I woke up once or twice I had a really good night's sleep so thank you very much for watching and like always see you in the next one